It's the magic of math here, and today my lesson is on compound probability, where we're going to talk about compound events and their probable outcomes. Here we go. Our learning objectives. You, the student, will determine the number of possible outcomes of compound events. You will create organized lists, tables, and tree diagrams to represent compound probabilities and you will use tree diagrams to find the probability of compound events. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about as we proceed through the lesson today. How can a tree diagram help you determine the probability of compound events? So we're gonna to learn to create tree diagrams for a useful purpose. Here's our vocabulary before we begin. A sample space is a list of all possible outcomes for a chance experiment. An outcome is one of the things that can happen during an experiment. So a sample space is an organized way to show all the outcomes. A tree diagram is a diagram that is used to organize the sample space of events. So a tree diagram is a type of sample space. And then our last compound probability is the probability of two or more events happening. And we'll discuss this more in the lesson. Let's begin by talking about a tree diagram. Here's a real world situation. We visit a local lunch truck for lunch. They offer a choice of a salad or a wrap. You then have a choice of turkey, ham, or veggies. And lastly, you will decide if you would like cheddar cheese or no cheese. So we're gonna create a sample space, specifically a di tree diagram, to determine how many possible outcomes there are. How many different choices can you make? So we're gonna make our tree diagram by looking at our first event. Our first event is to choose, do we want a salad or a wrap? So we're gonna list salad, and wrap, that's our first branch, or we're gonna branch off of here. So our second event is choosing, do we want turkey, ham, or veggies? So that's three choices. So three branches off the salad and three branches off the wrap, because once we've picked, now we have a salad with turkey, a salad with ham, or a salad with veggies. Same thing for the wrap. The wrap could be a turkey wrap, a ham wrap, or a veggie wrap. And our third and final event is for us to decide cheddar cheese or no cheese. So after all of these, we need to add two more branches on for our last event that has two choices. So we're gonna add in our cheese or no cheese for each. So this is a tree diagram which also represents the sample space. Now we wanna talk about the outcomes. So each one of these, as we follow the branches in the tree diagram, tells us an outcome. Let's just go and review one outcome. So one specific outcome is I choose salad with turkey and no cheese. So one outcome in this tree diagram is salad with turkey and no cheese. Let's talk about the possible outcomes in this sample space. How many possible outcomes are there from the lunch truck? So think of it this way. How many days could you visit this lunch truck and each one of them have picked a different combination? So how we would decide that is we could follow all the branches, salad, turkey, cheese, salad, turkey, no cheese, salad, ham, cheese, salad, ham, no cheese, salad, veggies, cheese, salad, veggies, no cheese, wrap, turkey, cheese, wrap, turkey, no cheese, wrap, ham, cheese, wrap, ham, no cheese, wrap, veggies, cheese, or wrap, veggies, no cheese. So we can see that we have 12 outcomes, one, we did it one, two, three, four, five, six, and we keep going. Each one, six choices on the salad, six choices on the wrap. 
So if you look at your tree diagram and you count down the last outcomes from this tree branches, it gives me 12. So that final column tells you how many possible outcomes. So we could visit this lunch truck 12 days in a row and every one of the 12 days would be different outcome. Now there's another way to find the possible outcomes and sometimes it's not realistic to make a tree diagram. Let's practice on what we've already made as our tree diagram. So the fundamental principle is a way to figure out the total number of possible outcomes. To use the principle, you multiply the number of ways for each event to find the total possible outcomes. So we begin by our first event, which was to pick salad or wrap. There were two outcomes to that first event. Our second event had three outcomes, turkey, ham, or veggies. And our last event was to pick cheese or no cheese, so two. Two multiplied by three has a product of six. Six multiplied by two has a product of 12, which is what we got when we counted our branches, our outcomes in our tree diagram. One thing students make a mistake here when they look at a tree diagram is they take this right here and count that as six. Remember, that second event did not have six choices. It was three choices. So two choices, three choices, two choices. So be careful when we think about that. So 12 different outcomes. Now, sometimes there's so, so many outcomes that are possible when we go somewhere. And it would not be realistic to make a tree diagram. You would just need a huge billboard to do have enough room to do it. So let's use the fundamental counting principle to do this. The Subway Shop offers seven bread varieties, eight meter protein choices, four kinds of cheese, 12 vegetable toppings, and five dressing options. How many different outcomes are possible at the Subway Shop? So you've all been somewhere and they've asked you all of these questions. And you've just probably never considered every time you're asked what you want, that that's an event and creating a unique possible outcome. So let's think about this and think about how many times we could visit the subway shop and have a different combination. So we're gonna start with, we're knowing that we're finding just the possible outcomes. How many different ones are there? Our first event is to pick a bread, so seven. Our second event is to pick one of the eight meat or protein choices. Our third event is to pick what kind of cheese we want. Our 12 toppings are our next event. And our final event is what do we want for dressing options. Okay, we're gonna use our calculator for this. Seven multiplied by eight, multiplied by four, multiplied by 12, multiplied by five equals 13,440. So there are 13,440 possible outcomes at the Subway shop. Think about that. When you're in a shop or a lunch place, a restaurant, and you have all those choices to make, you could visit this sandwich shop 13,440 times and each one have a unique sandwich. All right, it's your turn. You're going to an ice cream buffet and the options are shown below on this menu. We're asked how many different outcomes are possible at the ice cream buffet when you choose one size, one flavor, and one topping. You pick your strategy, go ahead and pause, and come back to see my work. Welcome back. So our solution here, I'm gonna use the fundamental counting principle. Maybe you made a tree diagram all personal choices. So my first is I'm tying all the different outcomes when I pick one size, one flavor, and one topping. So my first event is to determine my size. I have three sizes to pick from. My second event is to pick a flavor. I have three flavors to pick from. And my third and final event is to pick my topping. Cookie crumbles, peanuts, or sprinkles. There's three. So now we need to find the product. 3 multiplied by 3 is 9, multiplied by 3 is 27. 
So we have 27 different outcomes that are possible when choosing one size, one flavor, and one topping at this ice cream buffet. Think about that. You could go to this ice cream buffet 27 days in a row and each time have 27 different outcomes. Now I want you to create a tree diagram. Here's the scenario. You're playing a game. On each turn, you will roll a number cube and spin the arrow on a spinner. The number cube has sides numbered one through six. The spinner has three equal sections, pink, yellow, and blue. I want you to make a sample space to show all the possible outcomes of rolling the number cube and spinning the spinner each one time. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So let's create our tree diagram. I'm actually going to show you three ways to create a sample space. Tree diagram, our first event was to roll our number cube. Six different outcomes, the numbers one through six. From there, we were going to spin a spinner with three sections. So each one of these needs to have three branches. Pink, yellow, and blue were our color choices on our spinner. So each one, two pink, yellow, blue, three has three branches, pink, yellow, blue, four will have three branches with pink, yellow, blue, and we could do spin a five with a pink, a yellow, or a blue. And last, we have six with pink, yellow, or blue. So there's our tree diagram. Another way we could do it is make an organized list. We could say, well, I could get a one in a pink, one in yellow, one in blue. What you can see is this right here, this branch of our tree. Then we could have rolled a two and spun pink, two, the spinner lands on yellow, two, and spinner on blue. We're gonna go through and we'll have those same choices in our organized list for three, for rolling a four and spinning, rolling a five and spinning the spinner, and rolling a six and spinning the spinner. And the third way you could do it is using a table. So we create a table where we have the rolling of the dice and spinning the spinner. And then we can fill in the first row. We could have had rolled a one and spinner lands on pink, one P, two P, representing rolling a two and the spinner landing on pink. Then we fill in the second row with our number and our color yellow, and our third row rolling the number cube and the spinner lands on blue. So this right here is our sample space in the table. Here's our sample space of our organized list and our sample space of our tree diagram. Now let's go ahead and use a tree diagram to find compound probability. We're asked, what is the probability that on your turn you will roll a five and the spinner will land on pink? Still assuming that we have one number cube and a spinner that's got three equal sections, pink, yellow, blue. So using this, we're gonna determine about rolling a five and the spinners on pink. Noting here that the big idea is both of these outcomes need to happen. So we're gonna to go to our tree diagram. We're gonna want the outcome of five on our first event, and then we spin and we want the outcome of pink. So we can see that only one of these outcomes is a five and pink on our spinner. And then we need to determine how many possible outcomes there were. So you could go through and count each one of these and know that there's 18, or you could say, well, there's six outcomes here, three outcomes here. Six times three is 18. So the probability of spinning and landing on pink and rolling a five is one out of 18. Looking at our organized list, we can see the only one that is a five and P for pink is right here. So only one of all of these 18 outcomes in our sample space is that combination. So the probability of rolling a five and the spinner landing on pink is one out of 18. Now it's your turn. I would like you to determine what is the probability that on your turn you will roll an even number and the spinner will land on blue. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So here we're going to find the possibility, the probability of an even number and landing on blue. So let's identify our even numbers. Two, 
4 and 6 are our even numbers out of 1 through 6. When we go to 2, we want it to land on blue on the spinner. So 2 and blue, 4 and blue, and 6 and blue. So out of all of our outcomes, 3 are an even number and blue. So 3 out of 18. You could also have simplified this to be 1 over 6. All right, your turn. What is the probability that on your turn you will roll an even number and spin the spinner and it will not land on blue? Go ahead and pause. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. Here's our solution. We're going to roll and hope for an even number. And what about the spinner not landing on blue? So you can see how this gets tricky and using a sample space will help. So let's identify our even numbers, two, four, and six, and then not on blue. So two land on pink or two land on yellow. Four land on pink or four land on yellow. Six on pink and six on yellow. So one, two, three, four, five, six outcomes that are even and not blue. Six out of 18. Let's simplify this one. We're going to simplify it. Both are divisible by six. Six divided by six is one, and 18 divided by six is three. So a probability of one third. So one in three chance of spinning um, not blue and rolling and it being even. And there you have it. That is compound probability and tree diagrams, organized lists, and tables as our organizing our sample spaces. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.